let's see if this meets radio TV phone or not packing certification criteria I kind of doubt it This is a vintage 1960s EF Johnson or Johnson uh, 23 channel CB radio. It's a Messenger 123. And this is the first generation. This is the germanium transistor based unit. And I'd been looking for one of these because this is one of the very first CBs I had as a kid. Uh, I remember I was on my way to school and there was a garage sale and I stopped by the garage sale and they had one of these with the antenna for five dollars well I bought it and at the time CB was actually kind of still being used and um, I got to playing with it mostly listening at that time a license was not required it used to be a license required for CB but at that time when I got it there was no license required and unfortunately I ended up hooking it up backwards and I tried and tried and tried to fix it and at the time I just was too young I didn't have the skills or the diagnostic knowledge to diagnose something where the power had been hooked up backwards and I only did it for a second so it probably just caused some diodes or something to short but inevitably it ended up torn apart and pieces all over the place. Now the Messenger 123A and B, and I think there's a 123SJ, are extremely common and easy to find. And they're a modern, more, much more updated silicon transistor version of this guy. I wonder if that transistor is original. For some reason, I don't think it is. The problem with these old Messenger Johnson radios is these crystals all go bad. They drift. So we're going to do a frequency check on this guy. I hope maybe these haven't drifted but in almost every Johnson radio I've seen these crystals all go bad and drift all over the place I wonder if someone replaced the final doesn't look like it this is total Americana right here this is fully American made as if you couldn't tell no crappy capacitors in this. It's either tantalum teardrop or uh, the good electrolytics that seem to last forever. It doesn't look like anything has been tampered with. Maybe that one has been changed. And not many people use CB anymore. Maybe some of the truck drivers still have it. I know some of the middle age crisis off-road Jeep boomer crowd use it. But FRS is so superior in range and noise. The problem with CB, the main problem is fuel pump noise in a modern vehicle. Because these are AM, basically HF AM radios, unless you pull the fuel tank out, pull the pump assembly out, and put an RFI filter right above the pump, the fuel pump's basically a huge spark gap generator. So anyway, let's fire this up and see how it works and see how far the frequency's off. 
I'm hooked to a lithium ion phosphate battery pack which should be about 13 volts right now. Um, we got our watt meter here. Mo I'm more interested in the frequency than I am anything else. Well, let, let's see if we get any any This is Mumble Rap Communications Live right here. All you got to do is put a beat to this and you got to hit single. Club banger. See? So let's see. That's it. Channel 6. That's the only one doing anything. The Mumble Rap Communications Network. Okay. Really? Like one watt? Oh, I'm sorry. Two watts. Hello. Hello. Oh boy, it goes up to like two and a half watts. Let's see what the uh, SWR is. Eh, it's bad, but not real bad. But yeah, the power's kind of crappy. I would expect better. I would expect three and a half, four watts. I'm on five watts, so I'm on the lowest scale. Let's take a look at the frequency. This is not real accurate, but it'll give us a rough idea. Maybe it's not even enough power to trigger it. Okay, here we go. I had the range on the wrong setting. So channel 1, it's running about 26.965. That's right on. 26964, 26965. Okay, here's channel 11, 27084. That's probably, it should be 085. And I'm not guaranteeing that this little frequency... This is a convenience tool. This is not an accuracy tool. So the CB looks pretty close. These crystals suffer from silver migration the same way that IF can capacitors do. And you know, that's that happens in color TVs too. The 3.8 crystal will drift over time, but these look good. And this is maybe the first one of these radios I've seen where the crystals are kind of on frequency. So I like, I'm happy about that. Here's a Johnson Messenger 123A. I pulled it out just to kind of compare the power. Two and a half watts. Two and a half watts. Looking at this, it looks like I need to add 30% to uh, a frequency lower than 100 megahertz. So that still would indicate that the output is kind of low. And that's why I compared it to the other radio. So plus, plus 30. 
4%, which is not that much. Let's do a frequency comparison to the 123A. Yeah, it's right on. 26965. So the older one seems to be a little bit low. Not enough to really matter, but it's low. Highly deep intellectual discussion. This is why nobody uses CB radio anymore with an IQ about 50. Here's a side by side of the 123 and the 123A. This is the 123 germanium based early solid state. This is the 123A. This one here, this is all American. This is when the Japanese IF transformers and speakers and stuff started to come in. This is when they started to get international. This is when they were more American. And you can kind of tell because this one didn't brag about being made in the USA, where this one had the Made in USA sticker on the back of it. These are single conversion. I think the other ones are uh, dual conversion, like the 323. <laughs> hey, folks, my neighbor showed me a picture yesterday. Duck Plucker. Okay, I'm going to go to channel 12, and I'm going to tweak a fate on these coils a little bit. Which is probably kind of a no-no unless you have a dummy load, but just for the entertainment value of the video, let's see. This one here is in between the driver and the output. So I'm going to tweak a facate here. Let's see what happens. Nothing happens, okay. Uh, we will try this one. appears to be st stuck okay we're not going to do anything with that let's try this one oh, down a little bit let's go back to this one right here I can't tell if I think my tool is just skipping inside the core. Yeah, that core is stuck. Wonder if someone tried to tweak it and broke it in there. Get a magnifying glass. Maybe that core is cracked. So let's see, how about this one right here? Making the dog bark, whatever it is. This one is this one is stuck too. There it goes. Nothing. Put it back where it is. Disappointing. Yeah, this is between, this is the pre-driver, so this is the transformer between the pre-driver and the driver. This is the driver, this is the transist transformer between the driver and the final. 
and then these are the these two right here are the final and tuna and Jesus at channel six rubbing out rubbing out, rubbing on my ability to speak the English language these are the the ones that tweak the I, I give up Thing that cell phones has largely replaced well it's kind of disappointing the power output is so low I mean not that there's a huge range difference between a watt and a half and four watts but I'd like to see it at four watts that would be neat maybe one of these transistors is tired maybe that because that core is cracked maybe it needs a full alignment to get the alignment instructions and do an alignment on it but I'm not going to talk on it anyway, so I'll just put it in, uh, put it in the four-wheel drive and just keep it so I can listen to the boomers talk about their prostate medication and what part on their Jeep broke. Check one, two. There it is, Johnson Messenger 123 and 123A, Vintage Citizens Band Radio, with germanium transistors and lots of couplets, couplets, hybrid module thingies to cut down on the parts count. <laughs> Sounds a slightly off frequency to me, but you know, how could you really tell with the content? But I don't know, it just kind of has that off frequency sound. And I know these crystals drift for a fact, but these are close enough to be usable as far as listening. <laughs> 